carbon exists in all different levels of Earth and it exists in the form of life, it exists in the form of minerals, it exists in the form of fluids, and we're interested in all of those different reservoirs of carbon, as well as how the carbon exchanges from one reservoir to another. I'm Bob Hazen. I'm senior staff scientist at the Carnegie Institution of Washington's Geophysical Laboratory. I'm also executive director of the Deep Carbon Observatory. Well, we're interested in carbon from the very surface all the way to the center of the planet. So it's an attempt to look at the broader carbon cycle, the, not just the surface environment or the near surface environment, but the, the cycle that involves the entire planet. Our work actually connects in a very interesting way with the larger question of deep carbon and carbon in, in planetary interiors. In our studies of origins of organic solids, we've discovered they form a very interesting class of material that was first identified by Rosalind Franklin. It's currently referred to now as carbon glass. So when you heat this material up, we can heat it to 1400 degrees centigrade and it doesn't go away, it doesn't fall apart. It tells me that the probability of retaining carbon in deep planetary interiors may very well be related to its, its primordial origins to begin with. So our, our mission is really to study in detail the abundance of carbon in the Earth's interior, where it's located, and especially uh, the flux of carbon from the Earth's interior to the surface, mainly through volcanoes. So the volcanoes are really the surface expression of the deep earth carbon cycle. I began to study volcanoes because I was interested in how the interior of the earth worked. Um, it's really the, uh, the volcanoes at the surface that give us uh, a window into the earth's deepest interior. Not only because magmas are generated there, but because those magmas also carry different pieces of the earth's interior up in them. And, and this is an example of this actually. Um, this is a sample of a magma which came out from the uh, volcano of Tahiti and that can, included in it are pieces of the Earth's mantle that were entrained in the lava during the eruption. By studying uh, rocks like these, by studying uh, volcanoes around uh, the Earth's surface, we can uh, get a better idea of really what the, the total fluxes are through the deep carbon cycle system. In uh, deep sea vents, we are investigating the abiotic formation of hydrocarbons at high pressure and temperatures. We are trying to simulate natural uh, environments and constrain the physical and chemical processes that um, give a signature resulting to what we see in our natural uh, samples. We have different experimental approaches. All of them are linked to the pressure and temperature regime that we're trying to simulate. So for deep sea hydrothermal vents, we're having butts and flow through reactors, which allow us to go to pressures up to 500 atmospheres and temperatures up to 400 degrees C Celsius. Much of my research involves thinking about how carbon and carbon-based molecules played a role in life's origin. This had been three and a half billion years ago. And that was a chemical process that involved concentrating, selecting organic molecules from a very dilute prebiotic soup, the ancient ocean. Our hypothesis is that this may have happened on mineral surfaces. So we have a laboratory that studies mineral surfaces, minerals like calcite, a very common mineral on Earth today, and the surfaces select and concentrate. They pull molecules out of the surface. They're decorated onto the surface, and then you get the self-organization, perhaps forming polymers, other kinds of macromolecules that may have played a fundamental role in life's origin. My specific interest is in the formation of diamonds, and diamonds are the flagship deep carbon mineral on the earth. It's hard for people to understand how, how deep these diamonds come from. Some diamonds that we see in the crust, what we call crustal diamonds, are, are actually exposed at the surface. But the diamonds that we call uh, normal diamonds that I found in, in, in jewelry and rings come from about 150 to 170, even maybe 180 kilometers deep within the lithosphere. They're brought up specially by eruptions of a, of a high um, a very explosive magma called a kimberlite, transported to the surface in, in, almost instantaneously geologically by these uh, explosive eruptions. I do primarily high pressure experiments using diamond anvil cells where I use carbon as the anvil in a diamond to generate high pressures and temperatures and then study the materials in those apparatus. And with these techniques which were developed here in the Carnegie Institution over the years, we can probe 
the nature of carbon over the broadest range of pressures and temperatures, in fact, covering the entire pressure temperature range found within the planet. The basic th thrust of my research is to come up with a, a way of being able to find life on other planets, so particularly Mars. The majority of the samples that I use, uh, if they're Martian, are, are Mars meteorites. Uh, for instance, there's been a very recent fall that I just have got samples and my colleagues and I are doing a lot of analysis on those at the moment. Uh, the other, I, I go to the Arctic, uh, the high Arctic to uh, uh, an island called Svalbard, where there's a lot of unusual geology that's very similar to, to Mars uh, in, in some ways. My field work has taken me um, all over the world. I've just been to Belize, um, studying corals and looking at carbon cycling there, and, and mangroves are the big trees that grow in salt water at the edges of, of the ocean. So this summer, I was up in uh, northern Quebec in the middle of Hudson Bay to the Belcher Islands. That's where all these plants that are on the table came from. I am a very interdisciplinary scientist, and I work with a lot of different people on this deep carbon uh, observatory project. I've had to figure out how to do meaningful experiments with people in completely different fields. And uh, it's a challenge that I enjoy and I think uh, makes my work a little more relevant.